I think they're significantly uh, in the direction of deregulation. That's kind of been the glide path we've been on for several years now, which I think directionally is the wrong way. And we're paying for it now in terms of the uh, what we could have larger capacity for banks to deal with the current pandemic. These two specific proposals, I think, are ill-advised, especially as a former chair of the FDIC. It won't surprise you to hear me to say that that $40 billion that will no longer be in banks to protect them against derivatives exposures that their affiliates are imposing on them uh, is no longer there. I think that imperils increases risk to the deposit insurance fund. So no, I do think that's ill-advised. And the Volcker rule, you know, they've been listing that for years now. It's been under constant assault. This, uh, as I understand it, the rule change basically defers to banks to decide what's proprietary or not. Uh, we went down that road with risk-based capital because you remember we we're basically letting uh, banks decide how much capital they should have uh, prior to the great financial crisis. So been there, done that in a different context. It's not a good idea. So I think very disappointing, but it is what it is. I'm getting used to it uh, with, the, with the current, uh, I, I, you know, I respect all of them, but I think they are directionally so going the wrong way on all of this. There, without question, is a, is a very pronounced seasonality uh, into June trading in, in the S&P. And this has been for the last 25 years, um, more or less as volatility became an asset class, as volatility became uh, an input to determine um, uh, institutional investor uh, exposures. And as that has um, correlated to this kind of reopening um, economic trajectory, feel good trade over the past one month, um, what the phenomenon really pivots around is the June options expiration, which is you know one of the four majors, one of the four serial options expirations uh, over the course of the year. It's quarterly, and certainly in light of the past quarter's um, you know chaotic trading environment, uh, it was a very big one. And what you end up seeing then over this kind of past 25 year period, especially on a trade up into the June options expiration, is a really well-documented um, phenomenon where the week and actually the two week period thereafter, after the options expiration, which was for the VIX, it was last Wednesday, uh, for ETF index and singles, it was last Friday, um, a trade down. And we're talking about over the last 27 years, 26 years, um, when the S&P has been up over one month into um, the options expiration, the following week thereafter, which is this week, um, the S&P is only up 12% of the time. And there are you know, a number of, of inputs uh, in, into that. I think you will consent, continue to see kind of rolling W's, if you will, localized W's within um, uh, the, the economy. I, I will note that some of the more serious cases uh, increases are in the emerging markets such as Brazil, India, uh, and Mexico. But I will also say that if you look at Sweden and Iran provide an interesting case study where they're, they are clearly beginning to see a second wave of cases, but death rates are actually not increasing at the same level as the first wave. And I think that's in part because we've learned to isolate the vulnerable better, um, improve our reaction times, and have imposed uh, better therapeutic measures. And so that the last thing point. was of a Another global lockdown, I think, is low, but it does challenge the notion of a V-shaped recovery. I think, Carl, that uh, the COVID data remains the most important set of data points. Uh, when you get these uh, worries about you know, flare-up, as we've seen in the last 48 hours, the market is red. And, uh, you know, another couple of days where it's kind of quiet and maybe there's rumors of a therapeutic or vaccine making progress, the market's up. Uh, that's the main story. And behind that, of course, is the economic story, which is uh, almost as important. But this is not going to be straight up uh, off the shutdown the economy. We've seen a lot of good news uh, as a lot of data move from very low to less low. But the increase was impressive and the markets like that. It's not going to be a straight line. Uh, and we'll have bumps along the way. I would buy the bumps, but market's still a little ahead of itself in my view. I think um, 
when I had originally got asked to come on the show, I had said this, the equity markets and credit markets seem to be telling two different stories. Um, at least as of yesterday, it looks a little bit uh, like maybe the equity markets are getting on the same page. Uh, but what's what's interesting is why the market actually is as strong as it is, given where the economy is where it is. Essentially, if you think about where the levels are, is it? I realize that they project out into the equity markets project out into the future. But are we saying that the world is as good now as it was in February? I don't know. The data that's emerging on that is kind of mixed, so only time will tell. But I think we're in, a, in definitely a dislocation, uh, certainly between you know Main Street and the markets.